Anthony, what's up? What's going on, my man? What's go- happening? You good? I'm great, dude. It's been uh, it's been a while since we uh, did one of these. It has been. It has. I think the last time was you interviewing me. It was actually, yeah. That yes. was the last time we did one of these. That was awesome. And uh, you were the you're the only person to ever host an episode on the Grease Jazz <laughs> podcast aside from myself. That's quite an honor. I know in our first, the first time we ever did a podcast, we like knew of one another. Yeah. Uh, the, so you're now you're taking it further back a couple of years prior, right before the clubhouse, uh, big bang of the clubhouse. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I know. We like knew of one another, uh, did the interview and hit it off and we became uh, fast friends after that. So it's, yes, uh, yes. During the, uh, the, the clubhouse, big bang. <laughs> kind of. That's a good way to put it, actually. <laughs> And then the the big collapse. <laughs> Anyways, awesome having you on. Uh, I know we've been texting and calling each other to do this for a while, and you know we just keep putting each other off, so it's all good. Uh, but we finally found a date that works. Quarter date. And... <laughs> um. Anyways, enough of me talking to you. Talk to my audience, uh, the ones that didn't listen to the last episode. Who are you? Who is Anthony Orissus? If you haven't listened, I suggest you listen to the last two episodes with me and Tony on them. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anthony Arissus, uh, stemming out of Queens, New York, specifically Astoria, New York. And uh, I'm the founder of a company called Rare Cut. We're an apparel company, and our flagship product is a pocket square that I invented uh, that has memory metal inside of it. So no matter how you fold it, it stays up, which is also our tagline, and I'm also rocking one. As we speak, so this is our uh, flagship product, and uh, been doing this for a number of years, and uh, it's it's going in a good trajectory. Yeah, and I told you earlier that I got a new, new nickname for you. Actually, not a new nickname. Let's call it a new slogan. I think you should put this everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. It's patent no longer pending. I like that so much that I wrote it down on this piece of paper that you may or may not be able to see. Yeah, I was like, "Ooh, that's a good one." So you gave me gold. And- we've and- known rare cut as. Patent pending. Yes. But it's been a few years now, and now it is patent no longer pending. Congratulations. You got yourself the patent. Talk to me about the process of it, what it feels like receiving that. And what is it like? Is it just a is it what is it? Is it a book? Is it a piece of paper? Is it a CD? Is it a trophy? Talk to us. I'd hope it wasn't a CD. If it was a CD, I mean we'd be really behind the times on that, but I wish I actually had it in my possession at this moment. Uh it's in a vault right now. Uh, It's actually in my garage. But um, yeah, so getting rid of the pending is a big deal um, for many different reasons, right? One, the talk track. Two, actually having IP, uh, intellectual property that's your own, being an inventor now. So you can please refer to me as the inventor moving forward. Um, It it took a long time, man. I came up with the concept for this in 2016. I want to say that we put in the application and filed for a patent probably the end, the tail end of 2017 and the courts were backed up because of COVID and, you know, everything got delayed, but you're talking six years to, to actually get a, a patent is, is quite a long time. So it, probably just under uh, six years, if you can factor in the months, but it's a long time nonetheless, especially when you're an impatient Greek man. And, uh, you know, I was, <laughs> I don't know if you know any of those, I don't, yes. sir, but <laughs> an impatient Greek man that doesn't stop moving. You're constantly on the run. You're constantly grinding. That's been the, a hip word these last few years in the <laughs> entrepreneur world. Keep grinding. Uh, you've been grinding. Talk to me about the last few months. You're in Florida. You're in New York. You're going to Europe. You're doing this. Talk to me. Talk to me about the Florida trip. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, yeah, to your point, I'm definitely a high energy dude. That's for sure. I'm always moving. I usually take most of my calls uh, walking or or something. Usually my calls are on the go. But here I'm in, as you can see behind me, I'm the yeah. island of Chios. You're currently in Greece. There's zero wind. <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah, no, thank you for that. And I just know that there's a lot I want to accomplish. And there's only so much time, right? So I value my time and I know where I want to go. Um, and current, always trying to construct new ways uh, on how to get there. So uh, I like to be a man with a plan and I know where I'm going and I always want to be moving forward. So thank you for that. Uh, and to your question about like the last few months. So 2022 was an interesting year in many different regards, um, like with any year, right? Highs and lows, 
um ebbs and flows i'm not trying to rhyme but i just happened to rhyme and uh it came out natural it's the poet in me man yes. so i went into this year and one thing for the audience to know is that tony and i like to keep each other accountable we keep each other in check like good friends do uh we say it's every month but it has not been every month but we like to oftentimes often enough um have a checkup call to see what we're up to what are our goals where where are we looking to go uh professionally personally everything and everything in between right and i gotta say a lot of credit and props to you man you've had a lot of things we spoke about in 2022 you got there you know what i mean you accomplished a lot of those things on, on the list so before i talk about myself do you think how do you think the journey would have been different for you had you not been crystal clear and written those things down and kind of formulated uh a, a how and why in your planning you know me i would have got it done regardless no i'm just playing that is play. um i think it definitely no it definitely helps like yeah. like you mentioned we we try to get on a call monthly annually start the, the annual one i think is the better one because that's the where that's where you just set the the groundwork you know what i mean and it, it definitely helps because it keeps you because you, you, i think without it you can have all these goals and these ideas but what you the mistake you can make is you you might want to start adding everything you know everything everything and then you're adding too much and then your plate's too full if you set out and say okay by the end of this year if i can get all this done I ain't going to be ecstatic and it'll be even more than I'm hoping for, but you got to draw it out. You got to draw it out. And that's what I think we has benefited us by doing that monthly annually. So in Biggie's song, the 10 crack commandments, which might be the first time the 10 crack commandments have ever been referenced on this podcast. 100%. You took the words <laughs> out of my mouth. I never thought that that would ever make it to this show. Well, we've made it. And here we are. Uh, you know, I no we... longer can keep this as a clean podcast. I have to be <laughs> e, explicit. We're expanding our audience. So yes. um, one of the one of the commandments is never let them know your next move. But I actually would disagree with that because I think there is something to be said about putting it out there into existence and holding yourself accountable. Now, there are certain people maybe you don't want to tell, right? Maybe some people who would love to shut you down that, you know, right. see you doing big things and they want to stomp on it. Right. But I think if you're wary with the, the people that you care about, right. Your support system, if you tell them first, then we tell afterwards, that's fine. But when you have your core group of people that you're like, Hey, this is what I'm looking to do. You get that in, not just encouragement, but you also get just validation that, Hey, this is very possible. And here are some outside the box ideas on how I think you could potentially get there. That stuff all really helps. And the more you talk about it and plan for it, the higher the likelihood is of that happening. So yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm all about planning this stuff in advance. And, and you know, most great things in life don't happen by chance or by accident. They often come with having put a lot of thought into it. And after you put the thought into it, all of a sudden these doors tend to magically open because you know where you're going. You know the track in which you're going. And I think that's really vital for getting just about anything you want out of life. Yeah, there's there's no luck. Luck is just you're prepared. You were prepared for it. I heard and once it, luck is the residue of design. And I was like, ooh, I, huh. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. No, that's good. Um finish off the Florida talk. We, I know uh you went down there for a big show. Talk to me about it. Well, yeah. So I like I mentioned, 2022 I had a lot of like you know, peaks and valleys. And um, I learned a lot about myself and I was like, all right, you know what? I, there is something to be said about a fresh page. And a fresh page does not mean, you know, January 1st, uh, it doesn't have to be. For me, I looked at it as an opportunity to, but whoever is listening now, if, if you want to start a, a fresh page, you can do it literally right now. Um, but for me, there was some, some symbolism behind that and saying, you know what, let's start off 2023 doing something a little bit different, something that's been on my bucket list. So I started off by doing a polar bear plunge at Coney Island. So for those of you who don't know what that is, it's when crazy people like myself run into uh, ice cold water uh, in your bathing suit um, uh, on New Year's Day. So I was out until 4 a.m. I got up at 8. Shout out to my buddy that woke me up and made sure I, I jumped in his car. That was a rough ride. But once I got there, 
you go in there and it's like the best way I can describe running into cold water on January 1st, aside from insane, is uh, it's almost like a rebirth and in, in, in a uh, almost like a deeper sense, a christening of sorts, because you go in there and you get out of the water and you feel rejuvenated and fresh and you're like, let's go. This is new year. Let's start. And it doesn't have to be, again, one one twenty three or the first, but it certainly helped in, in just mentally preparing for a, a new adventure, a new start. And that's one of the things I kind of knew. So I pre-planned before New Year's. I'm like, all right, how's this year going to be different? The Florida trip that you're referring to is I went to a Tony Robbins business mastery seminar. Hmm. I am a huge, huge fan of Tony Robbins. He's the OG. I don't like to say motivational speaker. I think that's kind of like undervalues what he does. I'd say he's a results coach. That's the best way I can put it. Of all the people, if you listen to anyone that's that's relevant in this day and age that you listen to, has come into contact with or has been inspired, almost, I would say, 95% chance has been influenced by Tony Robbins. So that guy's, he's the OG. And yeah. I had an opportunity to go to his business mastery class. Um, it was only a Zoom thing. I paid for it years ago. And I got a message like, hey, it's expiring. It's on Zoom. I'm like, I don't want to go on Zoom. I paid this money. Yeah. I want to be there. They're like, well, we have two yeah. seats left. Come through. Call it luck. Call it, you know, luck residue of design. Is yeah. Call it whatever you will. I went there, man. And um, it was just like a transformative experience. The information is, listen, the information is top notch, right? And I'm, I'm not going to even go into all the details on everything I learned. We'd be here for days. But uh, I will say the people I was surrounded by was just as powerful as the material I learned because you're with high performers and people that are all there for the same reason. Everyone's trying to like improve and get the edge on life and and help one another as well. Um, And one thing that I took out of it, well, I took two things I'll quote. One thing is proximity is power. So if you want to be continually growing, right? If you want to constantly monitor yourself and, and put yourself in a position to succeed, be in proximity to others who have that same mindset. You know, if you don't know people like that, get to know people like that. Because if you, we talked about our support system earlier, if you don't have a support system that has the same beliefs and wants to go on the same trajectory as you, it's going to make it that much more difficult to get there. But when you have people that are kicking ass and doing all these things, these big things in their lives, all of a sudden, those things are no longer a dream to you. They seem very possible because you've seen someone do it. And once someone has written the script on how to do it, it seems doable. Like, for example, uh, you probably know the story of the four minute mile. It never been done ever in the history of mankind. No one ever ran a four minute mile. I, I forget the gentleman's name, but he broke it. Right. And then all of a sudden, after he broke the four minute mile, then from nowhere, people were doing it you know, more often than ever before. And it's been done time and time again. Why? Because it showed everyone it was possible. I bring that up to to just further elaborate that. When you're with people that have done big things that are like the movers and shakers of the world that just have an influence on society and trying to like just do good in the world or advance even their careers, whatever it may be, you're like, oh, dang, that's that's very doable. And having a good example by you is key in order to change your mindset. So was a, was around a lot of high performers and that definitely rubbed off, man. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I've always wanted to see Tony Robbins. He just seems larger than life and super inspiring. But I'll tell you who I did see recently. Um, different category of, of presenters slash podcasters slash inspirers. But in the health category, Marie and I went and saw Jay Shetty. Yes. Oh, love Jay Shetty. How was yeah. that? That was really cool. And you're not going to even imagine how I figured out about this show. So I didn't really know much about Jay Shetty until Maria introduced me to him. We were in Greece and we were driving on a road trip and we were listening for, looking for like something to listen to. She goes, I have this book called The the Think Like a Monk. And I I think I've seen him before, heard of him before. But since then, I've like subscribed to the podcast. I'll always, when I'm driving, I'll pick one of his podcasts if I haven't, if I'm looking for something that I don't. I haven't already listened to and this past winter this past december i was driving down to florida and to go down to spend the holidays with her uh and her family florida, florida man but florida man florida man right. and the way down obviously it's gonna be music it's gonna be podcasts it's gonna be everything so i'm listening to a bunch of jay shetty 
and I have yet to get Maria her uh, Christmas gift. So we're driving, and well, I'm driving. I'm just a solo drive down, and I'm listening to his show, and he kept talking about he's going on tour. And I'm like, imagine he comes to Boston. That would be an amazing gift. It would be something she would never expect, right? So I go to his website real quick, and he's coming to Boston in February. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is it. I'm, that's the that's the Christmas gift. So we went down there. We, sh- went, we did the whole, I took her to the mall to do the fake shopping thing. Like, hey, go show me what you like. But, like, I already knew what I was getting her. And we were in and out. Like, like usually, like, I'll f- put on an act and be like, oh. Yeah. Like, literally, in, like, 40 minutes, we were gone. And she's like, you didn't let me show you anything. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I got a good idea of what you want. Don't worry, don't worry. Come on. You, you took Maria fake shopping. I want to make sure I understood this properly. You took Maria fake shopping. Meaning, like, fake idea shopping. Like, I was like, no, go, right. let's go so you can show me some things you like. Try, try this sweater on that I'm not going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Real nice, Don. So, nice. I, I wanted to really throw her off on this. Because, like, the box that you put to... I, I I took, uh, so I bought the tickets. I went to Staples and printed out the digital tickets. I made them, like, I printed out the, what do you call it? The the Apple Wallet logo. Like, it's a big ticket I printed out. And I I had a box of chocolates. Because when I went down, I brought flowers and chocolates. You know, you're going to do all that good stuff for a surprise. Um, And uh, so I'm like, I need something to put these two pieces of paper in. So the chocolates, I emptied them out. I put them in there, sealed it up. Put it wrapped it up, put it on the tree with the other thing I got her. And so it's now time to open it. I'm like, I'm gonna give you a million guesses. I don't think you'll ever guess. I'll say this for like a couple days. I'll give you like a thousand guesses. I, and I promise you, like, you'll never, ever, ever get you're never gonna guess that, right? So then she's the box, she's like, it's light as hell, this and that. And then you she as she opens it, I just go, What? Like the most you're never gonna think that's that's what you're gonna get, right? So she was obviously super shocked. And then we went this past in, in February recently and he was quite the show. He was, we were, we weren't sure what we expected. Are you expecting like a panel style talk? Are you sitting there with a couple of people? Are you expecting him to just stand there and talk? He put on a, a, a show by himself. He had guests, he had people from the seats come up for his special parts where he did like little segments and he was inspiring. And, he was two thumbs up, Jay Shetty. Yeah, that's a very sweet and thoughtful gift. It makes up for you taking Maria fake shopping. So you are yes, given yes. by her. Uh, and I know that she's a huge fan. She's actually referenced him a number of times before in the past. So being in tune and you know to, yeah. to what he likes is it's the stuff. thought that counts. Yes, it is. And these tickets aren't cheap nowadays to go to yeah. something like that. I mean, what is you know? We had front row seats. Second you row, except that, like, so in the front is like the VIP section for like friends, family, and people that know him. So that's like the first like five rows, and those are roped off, right? And those are like really close to the stage. You get a stage, but then after there's a walkway, and then we're the second row there. So he's probably, I don't know, like 15 feet away from us. It was, it was really cool. Is that the influencer? He, it, it was, it was, <laughs> it was. Speaking of which, this was a non Greek event, right? But right. while we were waiting in line, some lady turned around and goes, yep, I'll buy whatever it is. How great is that? Is that it follows you everywhere. And I'm like, it's not even a Greek event. And it happened. We're watching, Tony. We're out there. We're watching you. They're out there. They're out. So then I'm like, I, I posted that in my story. And I'm like, and, and then in the stories now, you know how you can like stories. So those come up, those people come up quickly in the top. I'm like. I'm, I, a couple of people had liked it. I'm like, I, that's got to be the person. So I quickly tapped the profile. I'm like, there she is. That's the person that said it. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, let me, like, yep. What was, I it it lives on. Saying? Yeah. No, I was going to say, uh, I'm sure there was a, obviously a lot of subject matter there. What was your biggest takeaway um, that you wouldn't mind sharing from? Oh, that he show? had an um, he had amazing quote that he quoted from, what's his name? Charles Cooley. Um, that says, I am not who I think I am. I am not who you think I am. I am who you think I am. Wait, so I get, so what was the last one? I am who you think I am. Did I get that? I, one? No, sorry. Um, I wrote it down. Let me, let me, let me find it. Cause it was when he said that, I was like, 
that was like one of the deepest things I've heard in a while. And it hit, it hit because we're always, we're always afraid, not afraid. We're always thinking about how we're perceived, right? By other people. It goes, I am not what I think I am. I am not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. Oh, wow. That goes, that goes pretty deep, actually. That's multi-layered. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty on point. Like we're always, we're, we're always caring about, oh, how does this person perceive me? I need to act like that. Or I need to continue acting like that. If that, if I'm happy with that result. There's truth in that, man. There's a, yeah. lot, a lot of truth in that. And I think one of the best things you can do is have awareness. So once you're aware of that, right, then you can make changes if you feel like changes are necessary. But coming to grips and reality of that is, is, is key and being like, wait, am I doing this for me or am I doing this for someone else? And then yeah. you'll change course. It, it, and then and then you have this other amazing story um, where this dad tells his, uh, they find like a family jewel and he, she says, take it to the bake, uh, take it to the baker and ask him if he wants to buy it. And when he says how much, just put up two fingers. And so it shows, it's just, they had this like animation plane girl walks into the bakery tells him and she just goes like this and he goes oh two dollars oh and he says come back and tell me how much they say so she goes like this to him and he goes oh two dollars takes it home dad he said two dollars okay now take it to this this place um and put up two comes back the guy says 200 now take it to the jeweler goes there puts up two Guy says, Oh, you mean 2000? Comes back, says 2000. And that that was a nice story about how the values you're valued based off what people know, like what people expect. You're, you're the only one that controls your true value. It's that's absolutely true. It, even with you know, relating it to something, I guess, in my role to that, right? I think of my products, right? You go to certain places depending on the event. And they're like, what? That's the price? And they yeah. like collapse. And then you have, you go to like a event in like the Upper East Side or something like that, which I went to recently. And they're like, that's it? So yeah, it really, exactly. It yeah, so it's all. based off like what they know. It's like to the baker, $2 is a lot. To the jeweler who sees this rare, 2000 is. So uh, that was a pretty cool story. He had a bunch of amazing stuff and he's super inspiring. And yeah, that was a, I'm a big Jay Shetty fan now. He he got you hooked. Yeah, he did. It's it's his it's his it's his beautiful voice. And there's something about it that hooks me. He's one of the greats, man. I mean, of the modern day people out there, of the that, famous podcasters, he's up there with the, with all of them. Yeah, and I just think too, like there are people of influence that are. Some people are like extremely intelligent, but they don't have a way of, like their way of communication might be a bit monotonous or yeah. they're not really with it. Like he's so in tune with like what I believe like he knows the audience needs and wants to hear. Yeah. And his audience extremely well. So I got to say he's, he, and he's very engaging too. Like you can, and, and, and he knows his niche and he knows his knowledge, like the right. category he's special at, he knows it inside out. Like he's confident. There's nothing that he's thrown off by. Like he just, he knows what he's talking about. And he's got a way, even if you're not sure if what he's saying is real, you're convinced because of that luscious voice. I'm telling he's you. He's a monk. <laughs> it's, it's got that voice that just makes you want to believe. Oh, no. We we'll better watch our back. <laughs> Anyways, let, let's let's uh, shift gears. Let's talk some work ethic stuff, some inspiration, because obviously you're, you're a driven individual. You use the word entrepreneur. Can you spell entrepreneur, though? Yeah. Because you're not an entrepreneur unless you could spell it. You won't put the <laughs> uh, So let, let, let's start off simple. What inspires you every day to keep this thing going? So, you know, there's a quote that I love. It says, training never stops when you want to live an extraordinary life. So I feel like every day I'm training in some degree. And yeah, some days there's bigger lessons than others. Some days might feel a little stagnant, but for me, man, I want to step into living an extraordinary life. And what I'd like what I'd like to avoid at all costs is living an average existence because that would be pain for me. 
Um, you know, I feel very blessed to have, you know, a lot of opportunities in my life to have my own business, to be in this incredible country, to be from New York City. There's a lot of things that I'm very lucky in and blessed um, for. So I don't want to take any of that for granted. So for me to drop the ball and just like waste time pains me more than just about anything. Failure doesn't bother me nearly as bad as having felt like I wasted time or having felt like I could have moved the ball forward today, but chose not to. That to me, that to me is ultimate pain. So I'd say that the drive really comes from within and just like, dude, at the end of the day, when your head hits that pillow, you know if you had a productive day or not. And you can bullshit yourself. I'm sorry, I don't know if we're allowed to curse on this podcast. You can BS yourself, um, but you, you're not going to believe it. You might want to believe it at a surface level, but how you feel inside when you had a, a, a productive day from beginning to end, you feel that. You know that to be true. You can be like, ah, I tried my best, which oftentimes – Oftentimes is a cop out and you might, it might sound good, but you're not going to feel good. So um, doing little things, just constantly tinkering and switching things up, man, and just getting on a roll. And truly it's not the, it's not, it's not the sexiest answer in the world. It's not the most fun answer in the world, but having discipline in a routine is the key to freedom. Uh, people think discipline, they think school, right? They think discipline, uh, an institution, or maybe they think corporate America, maybe they think those things. But when you have discipline to be like, you know what, I'm not having Bugatsa, or I'm not having uh, whatever, I'm not having uh, Lukumadas, if you will, because I'm on track of my diet. While it might feel painful in the moment, and you're going to get other people being like, dude, just have the have Lukumadas with us. What are you, crazy? I don't care what they say in the moment. Deep down, they have massive respect for someone to be able to put off, you know, peer, call, peer pressure, call it whatever you will. I, I call it more just the, the influence of others because your why is so strong that you're willing to put that off for a temporary satisfaction for a longer term gain. And that's the people that are that do big things in, the, in, in this world is uh, they're led by discipline and routine. So it's a matter of constantly tinkering with that and and leaning into it because it's it's people like to overcomplicate everything you know i'm guilty of it too but the fact of the matter is it doesn't have to be that complicated it's the core basics and fundamentals if you follow them you don't need a, a five thousand dollar program to go to you don't you just need to remember those things and keep those in mind and you'll be in a better place with every coming week every coming month and the years to come that's i think that's the key to uh an extraordinary life how do you define success? Mm, great question. I wrote it on my board, which is right there, which is covered by this green screen. <laughs> I don't want to write. Uh, no, I, I don't even need that. Um, success you, can be defined in a multitude of different ways. Um, I, For me, success is living a magnificent life on your own terms. And that definition for me is different for you, as it is for Maria, as it is for Jay Shetty, as it is for anybody. Everyone's terms are different because we all want different things. We also have to keep in, in mind, you know, people get competitive. And if you if you channel that competitiveness for, for good, good could come out of that for sure. But everyone, you can support everyone at the same time because there's room for everyone. There's enough for everyone to eat. And you have to keep in mind, success magnificent life for me is different than for anyone else. And my own terms are different too. So the things that are important to me leaning into that. And, and the one thing that if I want to, be, that's more of a general answer to be more specific. I say this in my prayers twice a day. And, and this is, um, this is success for me more specifically is for me and my family um, to have abundant health, happiness, success and adventure. If I got those four, if we have those four, I'm a happy camper. That's success to me. I know in your in the previous question when you were talking about what inspires you, you touched on failure a little bit and how do you handle situations where you may fail at something? I don't want to say, no, how do you handle failure? We'll keep it simple. How do you handle failure? Well, if you're not failing, you're not trying, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can If you're you not can, first, you're last though. 
Me first or last. <laughs> Damn right. Um, and you could say that that can be said about across anything, right? If you're not, listen, with, I also sell medical devices, right? So I've had more no's than just about anyone in the company, but I've also in turn have more yeses than anyone in the company, right? Mm-hmm. Because you have to fail in order to succeed. If you're afraid of failure, then you're not going to be successful. If you're afraid of failure, deep down, you're also af- afraid of, of success and what you're fully capable of. And you can even liken that to um, single life, right? Uh, the, the people that have the most conversations and meet the most amount of people will probably get the most amount of no's because they're putting themselves out there. They're allowing themselves to be vulnerable. But those same people are also getting the most amount of yeses because they keep putting themselves out there and keep giving it a shot. And so long as you don't get too down on yourself and you just know like, hey, life is pretty much a numbers game, you know, whether it be anything, right? Uh, Applying for jobs, you know, trying to meet your significant other, um, trying to land a new account. You know, when you get to the point where no's, like I truly, like, I don't love to hear no. I prefer yes, you know, and I go to a client, hey, do you want to work with us? I want them to say yes. But if they say no, you know, if you can, if you can shift your mindset to a no is a not yet, and you don't walk away feeling all bent out of shape, you're just gonna be a stronger person for it. And that, that took time, you know, that didn't come right away. I, you know, I can't even say to you, like, yeah, I was, I was born with that. I wasn't, but uh-huh. you know, being in sales, you know, sales people typically oftentimes there's a negative connotation around people in sales, but I don't know, man, if it's not sales, if you're offering somebody a better solution and I don't, I never look at sales as sales, by the way, ever. I don't look at it like that. I, I have a really cool option for you. And this is why I think it's the best. And the decision is ultimately yours to make. And and having done that and having so many no's throughout my life right. enabled me to have more yeses. What's the best compliment you've gotten? Um, the best compliment I've received. So the best, the compliments. So sometimes you'll hear compliments in some way more than others, right? Some resonate with you a little bit more. Um, the best compliment I've gotten is um, that when that I'm embracing and that when I walk into a room, I will talk to anyone about anything and that I put a smile on people's face. And I think that's, that's part of winning in life for me is being Love able it. to <clears throat> Love it. All right. So let's take a quick break for commercials and we will be right back to continue this conversation with, Anthony Orissas, founder of Rare Cut, comma, I, because he's an inventor now. Do you get an acronym for being an inventor? Just call me The Inventor, that's all. The Inventor. <laughs> Sounds like a Blacklist episode. You ever watch that show? <laughs> it does, actually. <laughs> the Inventor. Uh, all right. So we'll be back after a quick break and with Anthony Orissas, and we'll be right back. Are you ready to visit Greece? So much to see. So much to do, so much to plan, so much wow, so much to take in, so much to learn, so much to enjoy, so much to discover, so little time. Where do you start? Introducing Grease Trips. Never miss a moment. Start planning with us today. All right, we're back. We're here with Anthony Orissus on Grease Chats podcast with Tony Cariotis. Anthony, so we were just talking about work ethic, inspiration, uh, how do you handle your failures, your, your compliments, all that good stuff. We'll talk a little more rare cut towards the end of the show, but I want to divert quickly to Greece since you're in Hios, apparently. It looks like I'm in Mykonos <laughs> for those watching on YouTube. Um, the video edition, you'll see we're in Greece. <clears throat> I think we're in Greece. The water's frozen for some road reason, but it's not whatever. It's just, the bad Wi Fi, it's the bad coffee. Yeah, it's the bad Wi Fi. It makes it look like the water is just static, it's yeah. not frozen, it's just static. <laughs> uh, let's talk Greece. Um, it says Greece Chats podcast. So, where in Greece is Anthony Orissus the inventor from? So, I'm from Kios on both sides. 
proudly from heroes on both sides, like all Hyotas. Mm. <laughs> how do you how, how do you know you met someone from Kios, right? Because they tell you right away. They it's like tell you right a away. marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Kios, all right. Um, then that messes up my next question, but it's all good. <laughs> Both sides are from Kios, right? All right. We're, we're in Kios. We're part of Kios. Talk to me about a little bit more Kios rather than just Kios. I want to know more about it. I know when we came for a few days, you hosted us on an amazing three day trip. Um, you took us to all the Mastija valleys and villages. Uh, so talk to me about what Kios is known for and what part of Kios you call home. Yeah, so uh, I'm from a town called Tolopotami. It's on the south side, dirty south. Uh, uh, we have Mastija in our town. So uh, Mastija is a tree, right? It's, it all comes from the um, Skinos tree. And basically it's a sap, a tree sap that comes out and it could be formed into, I mean, a t- they use it for everything, right? So Gum is the first thing I think of typically, the ouzo, shampoos, everything. Um, they do say there's some medicinal benefits alongside with it. The interesting fact about the skinos tree that produces mastica is that while you could plant the skinos tree in other regions all right, of the world, the only place that it will actually produce mastica is southern Chios. So not even northern Chios, which is crazy. Yeah, so let the people know this is exclusive to Kios and not anywhere in Kios. It's got to be the southern side of Kios. Southern, dude, you can't even bring it to Samos. Have you been to Samos, by the way? Have you been to Samos? <laughs> you have not been to Samos. Not been to Samos. Uh, no, but you could. But bring we it to did a- end up in Samos after that yeah, trip. Yeah, yes, but uh, that was our trip before Kios. But like, you could bring the yeah. skin tree to Mitilini, right, which is a neighboring island, or Ikaria, which is very close, and that will those regions will not grow. Uh, or produce mastica, which is like, which is crazy. So that's uh-huh. one of the things Kios is known for. It's also uh, Island of the Wind, um, which is, it's a very windy island, which I love because I, my body temperature runs extremely high. So I'm always very, very comfortable. It just agrees with me. So I'm thankful for that. Um, and when you came to Greece, you and Maria came, yeah, it was, it was a blast uh, hosting you guys because I felt it my personal responsibility to do as many things within reason um, in a three-day time period. And we saw a lot of cool things, man. We we went to uh, uh, two of the coolest villages, in my opinion. We went to Piri, which is known for like um, the architecture and the, the almost like, I don't call it street art, but just the way that you see the buildings have beautiful yeah. black and white pattern design. Is that the, that's the village that has like the, um, the symmetry squares? Yeah. All the, the patterns on the buildings. Yes, yeah, that's being yes. heat. It's a beautiful sight to see. Uh, I know you guys were dealing with some stuff at that moment. I think it was like with your uh, uh, one of your Blue Star ferries being canceled. So I know you had to, it was a few a few moments there where you guys had to focus, but I, w- I was sightseeing and taking pictures. I, <laughs> I go there, it's still like the first time. And then Mesta, which is a very special place as well. It's almost, you know, it's, it's built in really, the majority of the town is within like, almost like a castle. So it's like very Game of Thrones-like and uh, two very special places. So we did that. We did the Mastica Museum. Um, you know, the place that we stay at is in Carfa. Uh, we have a place there, which is right by the water. And um, yeah, I think you guys- Beautiful got- view. Or, yeah, the view is- The place has a view, beautiful view. Yeah, yeah. So what would you advise a traveler that's heading to Hios? Give them Give a few tips for a traveler coming to visit your- beautiful island um so i would always say like the beaches that are off the not the main beaches like uh i have like cool that's where everyone hangs out and if you want to see other greek americans then by all means go there but there are so many like i have me is the first one i could think of there's so many tiny beaches that really don't hold a lot of people but that's where the best like the most beautiful water is uh, there's usually a little bit of a, an adventure to get there. Like a lot of beaches in Greece, right? Some climbing and some off-roading, but man, that makes the, it makes the, the adventure makes the destination that much sweeter when you get there. You're like, wait, are we on, are we on the path? Am I supposed to be driving through grass? Uh, and then you get there and you're like, oh man, this is it. So I would say, you know, all the nightlife, Hios is really known for, 
Um, the nightlife, Jorge has a lot going on. Red Limani, there's so many things you could do. But I would say my favorite thing to do, like bar none, without question, are the Panagiria. The Panagiria are top notch. Um, and they are the Panagiria that I almost took for granted. I didn't know that. I thought every island had Panagiria that lasted till the sunrise, only to find out that a lot don't. I, I just go to Hios, you know, not every summer, but many, many times. Um, I thought that was the standard. And then I went to some other places and they winded down at a an absurd hour, four in the morning, mm. uh, which is <laughs> which is early for Panagiria and Hios. And those are just the best times ever. There's nothing quite like it. You really get the authentic experience in Hios uh, going to Panagiria more than like the clubs. Listen, you can go to bars, clubs, good ones anywhere. Uh, Panagiria that are going to in the morning, you don't find that everywhere. So my highest, highest recommendation is go to Hios during uh, Panagiria season and, uh, and celebrate and do those as often as you can. Speaking of often, how often do you go back? <laughs> I know this question. We 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 had this discussion on our on our first podcast, and I think we actually counted live. <laughs> it was like counting. We did. Yes. Yeah, but is that number the same as Hios, or is this a number for Greece? Or have um, you? Oh yeah, I've never been to Greece and not gone to Hios. Okay, have... all right. So so the number is the same. Yes, I also don't want to go to Greece and not go to Hios. And actually, right. when, listen, I, and there's so many, and I want to be very clear about this. Obviously, we joke around. Um, you know, Hiotas love Hios. I mean, that, yeah. that was not a joke. That's for real. Yeah, you're not joking. <laughs> There's no joke. There's no joke there. But obviously, there, Greece is one of the most beautiful countries in the world, right? So there's so many gorgeous uh, islands and just uh, even the mainland is gorgeous, right? Um, but for me, the nostalgia of of knowing like, hey, my roots come from here make me more inclined to want to stay there and spend longer time there. And I've been to many places I've loved and enjoyed, but like... Uh, I'm sure you're the same with what God even knows, right? Like you kind of like revert back to whatever home is. Right. For you. So home in Greece for me is Hios. And some places are, I go there and they're an incredible time, but I can't wait to get to Hios when I go to Greece. All right. Let's, let's take our minds off Hios for a minute. If you could leave Hios, if you could somehow get off that rock, because I understand Kalimians for some odd reason. Me, I like going everywhere, but most of Kalimians I know they don't get off the rock. Let's say you can get off the rock. Give me your three favorite islands that you've gone to. So you've been to way more islands than I have. Let's be let's be crystal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can still I, give me your three favorite. Sure. Um, not including Kios, of course. Um, I would, and you were at this one with me. Uh, Ikaria, and you could say Arpadia added a lot to it, right? Good company. You can go anywhere. Yeah. With good company. Um, and you're going to have an incredible time. So that was a magical trip. Uh, also came at, you know, this was what, 2021. So we were, I think, just extra excited to, to yeah. be in it, right? Yeah. And it really coordinated extremely well. Our friend Christina did, uh, I think, all the planning. I just know I just gave her money and she's like, I got to <laughs> just, she's really incredible at setting up trips. So shout out to her. Um, but Icaria was really special and it was just so refreshing to be in Greece in general, and then on an island that is more laid back while is great most of the time, but not when you're starving, as you know. When you are starving and you go to Ikaria, you go to a restaurant, man, you better don't go to a uh, restaurant. I almost <laughs> you've never seen me mad uh, uh, until that was the, probably the one time you've ever witnessed me get really actually angry. I was afraid. <laughs> it was like, not many people have seen me angry, and that was pretty pretty, pretty frustrated. <laughs> That was the only time I've seen you not agitated, but legitimately yeah. angry was uh, that the wait. So recommendation, if you're going to go to Ikaria. And that was the first time I saw you hangry that, summer, that trip too, because there was one other evening where we were all like, the, just the schedule was off and we never made plans to eat and everybody was just hangry. I remember driving. And then after you ate, Maria ate, everyone was happy. You were apologizing. <laughs> Was that was that expression? I'm sorry for the things I said when I was hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I pretty much described uh, how yeah. I felt several moments in, in Ikaria. But you know, right, so you gave me that, Ikaria. You got give me two more. Yeah, and the one thing that we got gypped on in Ikaria was because it was 2021, there were no Panagiria allowed. So we yeah, experience right. we didn't get the full experience. Yeah, we 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 got gypped on that. Um, let's see, number two, 
I would say, well, this is actually not going to be an island. I'm going to send, uh, this is more uh, the uh, Peloponiso. Uh, then you're going to save that for later when I ask you about the mainland. Oh, okay, 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 fine, fine. So um, I would say number two, believe it or not, was um, Kuponisi because okay. it was very different. It was a different experience for me to be at a mm-hmm. place that there's no really no cars, no cars needed. Yeah. You're seeing all the same recurring characters, and you're like, isn't mm-hmm. that Greg with the broken arm? Yeah. I see where day three you're like greg what's up yeah. man just like everyone kind of knows everyone and yeah. um, i really got a, I, I got a kick out of that I, I really did and number three i'm gonna go with uh an answer because there's no one else there's no place else like it i'm gonna go with uh even though i, I it's not my go-to miko no man you go there you're gonna have a great time it's it's off the wall you know you don't need that many days there but everyone has some they might be fuzzy, but everyone has need, some really incredible. You need to you need to get your Mykonos fix in. Oh, so that's what you're saying. I, yeah, basically, yeah. And uh, you know, I went and I had such a blast, and we still talk about to this day. Um, you know, the things that we we did and experience when we were there. You're gonna have a, a whole lot of laughs, and it's just a happy place. And, and I'm more into the daytime scene than the nighttime scene there for sure. But um, yeah, there's nowhere else quite like Mykonos, so I'll put that at number three. All right. So now give me the three mainland spots. Mm, three mainland spots. So I've, I, I pretty much travel between. You were going to say one earlier. And probably, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can't even give you three. I mean, Athens, okay. there's so many different. Athens, Athens counts. Give me. So Athens. No, I, you know what? I will give you three, but I will oh, put yeah. Athens at one. Uh, number one. Um, oh, so you were ranking those islands. You weren't just giving me three. No, I was ranking them. Yeah, I was okay. Them. All right, whole experience. Now I went from one to three. All right. Um, there's a place called Petrochori, mm-hmm. and it's in like the Kalamata region, if you will. Yeah. Kalamata region. Uh, my my Theo is from there, and he's like just an amazing family member. He, I got into medical devices because of him, and like he just always embraces our family with open arms. And just when we go to Greece, he's so like like most good greek hospitality right him and my thea are like hey let's oh my thea's from Chios, right because it's my, my mom's sister but my my uncle is um from petrochori and we go there i'm trying to think of how long i think it's like a three plus hour ride which you know you can get hungry and hangry on that ride but once you're there man it's just um costa uh, what's it costa Costa Navarino, I want to say yep. that the, I think it's like what, a six star resort, even though they gave yeah. six stars. Uh, that's very close by. That's about a 20, 30 minutes away. And it's just like this paradise that he has laid out there. And just it's one of those places where I can go to and like the world is on pause and everything just quiets down. And you get to really reflect on like, okay, I'm very present with where I am right now. You know, and not to say I can't get that in Kios, but in Kios, there's a lot to do and so many people you know. But here, it's like, it's very tranquil and time kind of freezes there. And you, there's a private beach, there's olive trees everywhere. There's like a couple of like cafenia that are close by, but it's nothing like a crazy scene. And I, I like that. It's a nice switch of pace. One. Two, um, not fucked us because my brother-in-law is from there. And when he, when we got there, wanted to show us everything and we did a whole lot in a short amount of time and you know it's very similar to Hios. So there's a lot of people from Nafakta uh in New York in New York City specifically um and people from Nafakta are very proud to be from there and rightfully so it's an it's an incredible place really good people great food great scene the the bar scene is like top notch I didn't get to go to Apanahiri there but just uh good people and there's something to be said it depends on what trip you want it also depends on where you're from but it was nice going there and bumping into people that I knew. Like it was just a pleasant surprise. So um, yeah, I got a lot of love there, and I appreciate that. And three, uh, Athena. You know, there's you know, capital of the mainland of all Greece. Is, you know, got got to rank that too. And I don't usually stay in Athens for that long. I know there's a lot to be seen there and a lot to do. Um, but whenever I'm there in a short amount of time, I pack in a whole lot, and I, I get the most of my experience every time there. All right. So he doesn't like Athens. We get it. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no particular order. <laughs> uh, all right. Give me your three favorite Greek dishes. Hmm, okay. 
at the risk of not sounding basic, my number one, hands down, but it's a specific source. Basticcio is number one, but it's right. mom's basticcio. Just like mm. mom's M&M, mom's spaghetti, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mom's, mom's basticcio. I don't think that goes yeah. into the rap as well, but mom's basticcio is number one. There is no second place. I've never had one that was even a close second. Yeah. Sorry to all my extended family members that have tried. No one makes it better than mom. It's like that that meme I had did with Messi, with the guy with the trophy after the World Cup. And I wrote, your mother's pasticcio, your yes, in-laws yes. pasticcio. And I remember yeah. you reacted to it, so I know you get it. That, that hit a special place in my heart. Yeah. Number two, <laughs> as a simple dish, but dude, it hits the spot every single time. Macaroni aquí ma. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I'm like eating some after this interview. Are you? Oh, oh so yeah. Jealous. I'm trying to eat healthy, man. I think I'm going to have a souvlaki stick or something, but I don't know. From where, King Souvlaki? Uh, from Kyo. Oh, no, you're in Kyo. Sorry, you're, you're in Kyo. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll uh, probably BZ Grill, actually. I'm going to switch it up today. All right. Super lucky all the time. All right, so give me one more. So the I'm not going to go with the obvious, which is, you know, I'm not going to say that. So I'm going to switch it up and say... So I actually love Dolmadas, but there's with a catch. Love Dolmadas. I can eat those all day, but they have to be cold. So I actually prefer them refrigerated. No, they're always better the second day. Right? Don't you agree? Always, like always. some people like them warm. They don't they don't No, no, do- no, they're always better the second day, but you need to try Kalimnian edition. And I'm not joking. And I'm not just saying that cuz I'm from Kalimnos. It's one of the best dishes in Greece. And every time I've showed it to people, people I one time had to go to a business networking event in Brook in Massachusetts, and it was my turn to bring the food. Oh no, we were having sorry, we were having a Christmas party for the business networking group. And um everyone had to bring a dish. So at the time, I think my mother was making Kalimian fila. We call them fila, dolmadas. And I'm like, I need food for this big event. Can you make like a huge tray of them? So she banged them all right. I bring them there, and these these people just eating them like, what is this? Really? What is it? They were like, Can you send me the recipe? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll email you. <laughs> that yeah where can i find these so basically it's grape leaves stuffed with meat and rice however they're cooked in avgolemono in a huge pot of avgolemono and i'm telling you they're just soaked in them for hours it is it's not just a side this this is your this is your meal you eat this with a block of feta Mm. and some somi bro it's unreal so when we this summer, I'm gonna get you somehow to come to Kalimnos. Maybe we'll get a, a the villa that I usually go there, and we'll get a group together, and we're all gonna eat Kalimian fila together. Dude, all right. This is why I cannot watch the Food Network because I watch these things and I just want to be eating it. And I'm eating like like potato chips, and I'm like oh, I'd rather have that. Now you just told me this meal, and I don't want to eat whatever I'm about to eat now. That sounds so damn good. I yeah. will go for it, but damn man, you you sold that well. Awesome. <laughs> All right. No, so that was three foods. Give me three desserts. All right. I'm not a I'm not the biggest dessert person, dude. So I'll go with kind of like the obvious here. Baklava is the best. I don't really have it that often. Um I'm gonna go with Garpuzi and feta. I know that's nice. can be looked at as an appetizer. No, um, that's that's good. That's so good, man. Oh, the man. combination. So a slice of bread, carpuzzi, and feta is like an elite triangle. Yes, that is top notch, dude. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give a very. I'm gonna give a curveball here at number three because I don't even know the name of it, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. And again, not a big sweets person, but you'll know what this is. You'll only find them at Thea's house in the Chorio, in a little. A little dish, and it's got green wrapper on it. It's got chocolate, and it's got like a some like almond in the center. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's an almond with chocolate. It's like a chocolate ball. It's like it's not a ball. It's like a square, and you'll only find them. They don't. It's almost like they don't sell them in stores. Only Thea has. They're individually wrapped. Yes, they're and they're just in a little tray, or like every yeah's got in the in on a table. Yeah, spin them open and just pop it in. It's fantastic, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like the aluminum green. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, those are bomb. Those, oh, are bomb. those are the best, man. 
yeah, those are my three. But again, usually sweets, I try not to have them. All right. And then lastly, Fredo, Frappe, or El Inico Cafe? I mean, I got to say, it's so funny how, like, Frappe fell off the map. You yeah. know what I mean? It was like this unstoppable force. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an unstoppable force. And now it's like. Unstoppable. And it just, like, fell from grace. Like, yeah. I want a VH1 behind the music on what happened to Frappe. Yeah, that should be a documentary. <laughs> Dude, it, like, it didn't even have, like, a graceful, like, ride out into the sunset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it just disappeared. It yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I'll have a Frappe. I'm like, we don't even know what that is anymore. I don't even know what you're talking about, Frappe. What is Frappe? Like, it, almost overnight. It's, it's weird... like Mahmoud Abdul-Raouf disappearing from the NBA. Ooh, it's like that. What a reference. <laughs> I haven't thought about him since he disappeared from the NBA. Yeah. Correct. Was he the draft class of 1996? No, 80. Sure. No, he was kicked out by 96. He 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 was banished from the league. Was he? Yeah, he. It had to do with standing for the anthem and. Oh, what? Yeah. Who was the guy the Grizzlies drafted in 96? The Grizzlies in 96. You would know this. You're not talking about. Uh, oh, Sharif Abdul Rahim. That's who I thought you meant. No, he, no, no, no. Awesome. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf was the shooter. He was like the Steph Curry of the early nineties. Oh, he played I, at LSU I, with Shaq. You know what's funny? I wouldn't remember him playing, but I have. I definitely have his basketball cards in a shoebox somewhere. You do. So, yeah. 100%. Anyway, so Fredo, Frappe, or Nico, and we'll yeah. talk about the documentary about how Frappe has fallen off. <laughs> Dude, we should make that. I, I really. I think, think we should, important. and we just interview people and have them talk like in a very serious fashion, and but like it's it's a satire video, but like they're like. And they just get serious about it. No, that could be a great video. Let's do this. I think that'd be very fun. This summer, let's bang it out. A lot of tears will happen. People will, will like, I, I'm not going to cry. And people will be yeah. very upset because they had some good times. They had a great time with yeah. Frappe. That yeah. was good. So, listen, now that we can't even mention Frappe anymore, I got to go with the obvious. Fredo, right? It has yeah. to be. But I would go Fredo um, Cappuccino. That's probably my go-to. And then number two, the Elenico, or number two, the Frappe? Two uh for nostalgia, I'm gonna go frappe, even though we should do you like the, the warm, the hot Elenico cafe, or are you not that kind of, you don't drink it? I don't mind it, but given these options, I gotta put it at number three. Fair. Yeah. All right. So I asked you about what to tell the travelers coming to Hughes. We talked about your favorite places in Greece. Uh a little bit of Greek culture. You are a Greek American that grows up that grew up in America. Talk to me about the differences between not the difference between Greeks, Greeks in Greece, and Greeks here. Well, you know the one thing that I, I, I get told always, and I know a lot of I have friends with a lot of Greeks from Greece who moved here, and the one thing that we constantly hear, and I'm sure you're you've heard it for sure, and I'm sure your audience has heard it as well, and um, I, I take pride in it. They say you know the the Greek Americans do a better job of retaining the culture than Greeks in, in Greece do. You know, yeah. I'm sure you've heard that time and time again. Um, I think there is something beautiful about that. And I think sometimes, you know, from there, and they might be like, all right, guys, like it's not 1962 anymore, like move on. Um, but there is something beautiful about preserving that culture and someone's got to do it. Right. And I I think it's really nice that, you know, it's funny because you'll hear more Greek songs, at least I have, uh, you'll hear more Greek songs at a Greek American wedding oftentimes than a Greek wedding in Athens. You know, I've been to several Greek weddings in Athens and they played a handful of Greek songs and the rest right. was like stuff that you would think they'd be playing at a, a Greek American wedding, but it's somehow. Right. Just right. Really it's just where here in America as Greeks were hanging on to the culture. They have it right outside their backyard. So it's different. I get it. It's, but it's, yeah. I do appreciate how Greeks here hold on to it and represent it to the fullest. So, Cause at times oh. you're like, all right, all right. The whole Greek thing. No, but that's just how we are it's who we are like we love letting you know like just like you like telling people you're from kios we like telling people we were from greece <laughs> yeah it's like uh it, it's almost like it almost becomes part of your i don't know almost like part of your personality to some degree too because it's such a big part of who you are how could you not talk about it you know you're raised yeah. there's no other way to slice it you know that you're raised differently you know, growing up Greek American is different than being up just standard American. And I think that's, you know, a lot of my friends who happen to be, 
you know, Jewish American, they're like, oh, I, I get the Greek culture. Like I get it. Cause we feel like we have a, a different upbringing as well, but we get like how you guys are so tied into your culture and to your people, to your roots. Um, a lot of my Indian American friends say the same thing. So like, if you are a part of any culture that really, um, you know, you value your roots and where you come from and you're still in touch uh, with with the people, your ancestors or anything, you still visit the motherland, so to speak, you, you understand Greek culture. And if you go to Greece one time, you kind of understand why Greeks love Greece so much. Love it. Yeah. All right, let's pivot back. Start wrapping things up. We'll uh, get back into a little bit more rare cut work stuff and then I'll let you go. Um, what inspires, earlier I asked you, what inspires you every day? But I want to know what inspires, what or who inspires your work ethic? Okay. Uh, my work ethic, I definitely got from my father. And he's on a whole nother level, man. I, you know, he, he's goals for me when it comes to work ethic. Um, he's 69 years old. I mean, I say, I'm about to be 38. I say I have the energy of a 25-year-old, and I do. He's 69, he has energy of a 25 year old. So like, I gotta say, I'm very fortunate to have that in my genes. He is nonstop. He always takes on projects. Uh, if you need anything, he's the guy to call for everything really. Um, so having seen that, you know, it's one thing to read a book. It's another to see someone in your life who um, instills that work ethic in you. And you know, what's funny too, I picked up a lot of things that I didn't realize, you know, so I would go to, after school, if I wasn't even playing sports, I would go to my dad's office. So he has a real estate in Bayside, Queens, and I would sit in the office and I just kind of, I, I didn't really realize that I was, I was subconsciously taking all this stuff in, but I just see how he spoke to customers, spoke to, spoke to his employees, picked up the phone, dealt with crises, you know, dealt with success. And you don't really realize like you're, you're like a sponge, a Kalimian sponge, and you're just like absorbing all this stuff and not realizing it. And then I would get told like, oh, people are like, wow, you're, you're whatever age I was, you're 14 and you're, it's almost like you're very polished in a lot of ways in regards to business and how to deal with customers and, you know, getting my first job. I remember like my, the other kids were 16, like I was, and they were just like, Anthony, we're putting you, you're the customer facing person. You're really good at this. And, and why am I good at this? I had no idea, but it's just by learning through example. So that, that stands to your question. That's where I got my work ethic from. And I still aspire to be on, uh, on my pops's level. He's, he's. So, so that's where you got your work ethic from, but, um, tell, I want to dive a little bit deeper. What inspires that work ethic on a daily basis? What, when you get up, what is pushing you to keep this going? Okay. So I kind of somewhat touched on it earlier, but mm -hmm. I am beyond grateful to be in a position like I am now, right? So we had our ancestors come willingly to this country and um, they did so much sacrificing for me and for us really, right? To be here. And I, every day, I think you've seen it in my apartment on the way down the stairs, there's a picture of the boat that my Papu Andoni came on in 1914. And that's what started my, my family's journey in America, right? So every time I walk down those stairs, I touch it, I do my cross, I give thanks, and I don't want to let the people in my world down. So that's that's what gives me the drive. It's being like everyone made all these sacrifices, whether I know it or not, but everyone did. And for me to leave anything on the table would be do, would be doing a great disservice to everyone in it really it, throughout my ancestry to not put my best foot forward it would be disrespect in my personal opinion to by letting them down i let myself down and even though they can't see it i know it so i want to express my gratitude for the sacrifices that were made by elevating my status and just giving the most to the world as i possibly can well said uh where do you see yourself in three years Good question. Call it five. We'll call it five. Call it five years. Five. Yeah. Five is good. Um, I, in five years, well, I'd like to meet a nice girl within that time frame, settle down and have a kid. Uh, I think that's a reasonable <laughs> time period, I would say. 
uh, although not rushing anything, certainly, clearly, um, you know, that, that, that'd be ideal. I definitely want to be uh, a father and a husband. I know I'd be great at those. So, uh, you know, with the right person, I uh, would certainly take on that, uh, that, that new world. I'd, I'd be into it. I, I can, I already could tell I would love it. Um, so that with rare cut, I want to take that on full time. So, uh, you know, that's certainly the goal right now. I do two jobs. I want to bring rare cut to a point where it evolves into more than just what you currently know it as is just pocket squares. There's a lot of growth to be had there. Uh, we're getting into the custom world where we can do, um, custom pocket squares for monograms for weddings, uh, businesses. I'd love to have licensing deals to work with like, you know, the NBA and NFL and just, uh, you know, uh, I'm a Batman fan. So, you know, uh, DC comics, Marvel, all that stuff. And I want to be the go-to premier name when you think pocket squares is synonymous with rare cut, but even more than just pocket squares is branching out into other things. Um, you know, shirts for, for sure. Um, we're already doing that, um, maybe socks, but more apparel. And when you think rare cut, you're not just thinking of a singular product, but you're thinking more of like, what does rare cut actually mean? What does it embody? And you're more into the embodiment of what this movement is. Cause make no mistake. I made this to be a movement, not just to have, you know, a product, like having a product is great, but it, there's so much more and it goes so much deeper than just that. And this is just the beginning. So that, uh, also see five years dude i'd love to go to the world cup and uh is it? 26 i want to go to the championship game i'd love to be there uh i'd love to fly uh private never done that before um those are like smaller things i told you big picture things um, it's all on the visual board put them all on the visual board all right and now man yeah absolutely yeah and uh yeah yeah there's a lot of things here but uh i i think the the things i said earlier are more my priorities than anything I'm starting to feel like the background is not what I think it is. I thought he's in Kios, but he keeps looking towards the sunset. Like he's looking at this. Like yeah. looking at this he says he's looking at his vision board, but it's the sunset. <laughs> I was trying to get the waiter's attention to get me a. Uh, <laughs> I said, for that bad, he won't even look at me anymore. So I probably ordered the wrong thing. Yeah. All right. Our- I got. I, what's that? That'll be our first interview. I'm not kidding. And you know, we talk about speaking into existence. I really think if we do the What Happened to the Frappe yeah. mockumentary, I think it could be good, and you heard it it's here. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Cool. Cool. All right, I got one last question for you, and it's the question I ask everybody before I let them go. It's become the, the slogan for the podcast. And simple question, what does being Greek mean to you? Mm-hmm. Love that. Uh, being Greek, I think you – okay, being Greek to me means you have a responsibility to – do more and give back more because of your ancestry and because of so much has been accomplished that paved the path for you where so many cultures can't say that we can. And it's so incredible to be a part of this culture. You know, we've been the innovators, we've been the movers, the shakers of the world throughout, you know, for for all time pretty much. So having that in your DNA and knowing that's a part of you um, should give you the permission that you need to give yourself to do more, to think big, and to still change the world. Because just because, yeah, you know, ancient Greece is no longer obviously at the the top of the world like it once was back in the day, but, you know, it shaped history. It shaped humankind and civilization as we know that. And to have that as part of like who you are is huge. And that doesn't stop now. So that means remembering that, keeping in mind a higher purpose and just remembering that all things are doable and possible because they beat the odds in in more ways that can be counted and they defied the odds and they created something very special. Um, and to keep that in mind, and, and that doesn't end now, that gives you more, if anything, that gives you more responsibility, in my opinion, to now that the torch has been passed to you, to keep that torch going, to keep mm-hmm. it lit, to pass it on to others. Wow, well, well said, well Thanks, said. Bro. Anthony, thank you for coming on. Really quickly, get, tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, love that. Okay, cool. So uh, the website is rarecut.com. Uh, at, uh, our social handles um, for the business across all social media is at rarecut. 
we got lucky um so we're at rare cut and then personally if you want to find me personal again same across the board is at anthony orissus and the last name is o-r-i-s-s-e-s all s like stavros so that's where you can find me amazing again this was anthony orissus founder of rare cut the pocket square that stays up and it's no longer a patent that's pending it is an official podcast he is an inventor pending be gone pending be gone once again thank you anthony for coming on the show this has been grease chats with tony cariotis anthony orissus you can find him at at anthony orissus or at rarecut.com thank you anthony we'll talk soon thanks for having me man appreciate it